Alexander Siddig. Right, the English doctor from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. It's as if you were human. But while Sid, that's what his friends call him, was born in Sudan, he grew up with his mom in the United Kingdom. He's the nephew of the great English actor Malcolm McDowell. Oh my God, Alex Clockwork Orange. You see, Sid was as English as the Queen. Corgis and the crushing disappointment on the football pitch. But after 9-11, he had to face what it meant to be part Arab. At the same time, he started getting more roles. And not just your stereotypical terrorist number three roles, but complex men in an increasingly complicated world. We owed the Americans, but we've repaid that debt. And suddenly I'm a terrorist. I'm a godless communist. His latest plays into that. It's called Inescapable, premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival. Sid plays a Syrian Canadian who goes back to his home country to rescue his daughter. Well, frankly, I didn't think you'd be able to do very much. Then why are you here? In case something happens to me. Please welcome to the show, Alexander Sitting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Welcome to the program, my friend. Thank you. Nice job in the film. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You, you, you've, you've found, you actually got to play, and this is going to sound like a joke, but it's not a joke, you got to play an Arab man, but not in the typical way that Arab men are represented in most films. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably true. That's about as accurate as it can be. And I, I'm, I'm one of the luckier actors, I think, because uh, I think in the last five or six years, I've pretty much done that a few times, is trying to kind of swim upstream and play Arab characters that uh, are a little bit more sympathetic, perhaps, than the ones we're used to seeing on CNN. Right, absolutely. <laughs> Which has got to be an interesting place for you, because even though you are... I mean, that is your background to a degree. Yeah. You weren't raised that way. No, you, I you... was raised English. Right. You know, I had no idea I was Arab until 9-11. Really? Yeah, and then it came at me, boom, out of the blue. I mean, I knew that I had an Arabic name. Uh, my actual name is uh, very Arabic. Uh, you, 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 need, you need to hear it. You want to hear it? I want to hear all of it. Sadiq uh, al-Tahir al-Fadil al-Abdurrahman al-Muhammad Ahmed al-Abdul Karim al-Mahdi. That's the first few. Right. But you can call me Sid. I'll call you Sid. <laughs> So in 9-11, when it hits you, yeah. is, it, is it just when the casting calls come in, or do you start to identify in a way that you didn't realize, you know, you can cut down I the I start to identify in a way that I didn't realize I could. Um, I start to get political. I start to figure out what it all means, what the nature of identity means, who owns what piece of me, who owns what piece of everybody. Uh, and I'm thinking that certainly the Arab identity has been hijacked um, by a group of crazy militants and idiotic dictators and they can they can be english i mean they can be american or, or or english or arabic it's not exclusively the arabs stealing the identity from uh the arab nation arab culture and i think that it's, it's worth us getting that back and i think there is a dignified lovely generous arab man at the end of the rainbow and i'm looking for him this is certainly not your first experience with syria as a filmmaker weren't you once the prince of syria I was... Shall we play this? Very well, we've done it. It is only dangerous if you move. Yeah. You try. After all, the handle is set with British gold. Prince Faisal of Syria. A dangerous man. Yeah. 24 year old boy. Yeah. Uh, but that's also really early in Ray Fine's career, right? That's his first movie. Right. First proper movie, and my first proper movie. And Two it, young men. I got a card, a postcard from Alec Guinness after doing that. Really? Yeah. Sir Alec? Sir Alec Guinness. What did it say? He said, You did a better job than I did. Because he played Prince Faisal in Lawrence of Arabia. Right, this is Lawrence after Arabia, no, right? This is Lawrence after Arabia. <laughs> that must have meant something pretty special to get yeah, that kind it was, of card. It was a huge thing. It was a huge thing. Your family, uh, you're connected to powerful people in Sudan. Uh, yeah, they were, yeah. and they still probably are. To yeah. your family. Yeah. But you don't have, do you have no relationship with them? I don't have much of a relationship with them, no. I mean, they're still my uncles and aunts and cousins and nieces, and, and I love them as family. Um, uh, but I don't see them very often, and uh, I sometimes regret that, but I'm so disgusted by what happens in the Sudan that I'm sometimes not too worried. Is there a, um, a subconscious scratching at the window, which makes you feel like there is an incomplete part of your life because you cannot be connected. Is that happening because you can't be, can't have that kind of relationship? I sometimes wonder who I might have been had I stayed, had I not become English, 
and uh, an actor. The one thing my father on his deathbed said, never let him be an actor. <laughs> your, your mom was in the business, right? My mom was in the business. She was uh, public relations for theater. Mm -hmm. uh, my uncle's in the business. Um, yeah, I occasionally wonder what I might have turned out to be. Your uncle's in the business. Watch this clip. Well, now we're back to where we were. Yes? <laughs> Just like before and all forgotten. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah, you see, his uncle <laughs> is Malcolm Agarro. Yeah. Is Alex from a Clockwork Orange yeah. from Entourage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Alex, in fact, was uh, my first best friend, a golden retriever, who he called Alex after his character in Clockwork Orange. Amazing. And then I called myself Alexander after my first best friend, who was a golden retriever. So, in effect, I'm named after a character that Malcolm played on screen. From a Virgin's book, that's fantastic. <laughs> what, what kind of, like, is, is one afraid of their uncle when he's that guy? No. He's spectacular. He's lovely. He's such a great guy. And um, ever since my mother died a few years ago, we've become really close. And um, he just gets better and better and cuddly and cuddlier. Stick around. More with Alexander right after this. Thank you. Before I, I answer any more questions, there's something I wanted to say. I, I, having received all your letters over the years, and, and, and I've spoken to many of you, and some of you have traveled, you know, hundreds of miles uh, to be here, I'd just like to say, get a life, will you, people? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean for, for crying out loud, it's, it's just a TV show. <laughs> William Shatter on uh, an episode of Saturday Night Live. William knows all too well what those conventions can be like. Good old Captain Kirk. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had a moment where you looked around and thought, oh my God. What am I doing here? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I have. I was at one particular convention, and I, I never had any kind of glamorous, interesting stories to tell anybody about anything, really, about my life as an actor in Hollywood. But I was at a convention, and this girl came through, and, um, I'm, and she gave me a copy of Playboy, and I thought, that's really unusual. Uh, OK, thank you very much. And the people would give me unusual things all the time to sign, and I thought, well, I'm going to sign this. And I yeah. said, where, where, where would you like me to sign your copy of Playboy with? the most beautiful varsity girls or whatever it said on yeah. the front. And she went, don't sign it, just look at page 34. And so I sort of looked around me and hoped that when I got a moment to actually look at Playboy without 3,000 people watching me, I just sort of went to page 34 and there was a phone number and oh. a hotel room. Was it on a picture of her? I believe so. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I believe so. I never really found out, I have to say. Before I get to anthropology, not only was, you know, one of your family and the Clockwork Orange, and you've had your own run, but you also had a family member who was an alternate judge at the Nuremberg Trials. That's right, yeah. My step-grandfather, Norman Burkett, was a judge at Nuremberg. But I'm curious about Nuremberg, and we have a lot of paraphernalia. I mean, my son came over to the house. We have a kind of rambling cottage in, in Sussex. And he went rooting through all the books and came back into my barn, where I'm hanging out, and uh, gleefully says, look at this, look at this, I've got a copy of Mein Kampf in German. And we opened it, and it's signed by Hitler. In your tea chest. And he said, Daddy, can we sell that? <laughs> That's what he said. And what did you say? No. <laughs> no. It's really nice that your son found it, though, because uh, imagine one day they went, I went to a a Sid's house, and uh, he has an autographed copy of a Hitler book. Yeah, I know. That was just this, this holiday. <laughs> Who would you trust to take you canoeing into the Canadian interior and get you back safe again? Donald Rumsfeld. Really? Yeah. I know he'd do that. He'd... I don't like him. Yeah. <laughs> I know he'd get me out. <laughs> he'd kill people to get me out. That's amazing. <laughs> That's such a fabulous answer. What should never be on a sandwich? <sighs> I was going to say pineapple, but I'm going to stick with it. Pineapple? Pineapple. You might be right. I don't think it should be on a pizza either. Oh, I can do it on a pizza. Oh. Hawaiian. Oh. Why you got to hate Hawaii? Oh. You were never going to, is it because you didn't get cats on Lost? Is that why you hate Hawaiian? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> I love a Hawaiian pizza. It's a real pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you, too. Thank you. You're really lovely. You are exactly what they said you'd be. You're very kind. Alexander City, everybody. Inescapable is the film. You must see it. We're doing an ultimate.